Today, Miss Kitty is getting a chiropractic adjustment by Dr. Gail Koholik, and we're gonna just kind of check her over a little bit. Miss Kitty recently has just seemed to, she just suddenly looks a little bit old to me, so I was a little concerned about that, and she did choke a couple weeks ago now, a um, week and a half ago maybe. So there's a video on her choking. If you wanna check out the link above, it'll take you right to that video. So since she choked, I've been giving her wet feed and um, alfalfa as well with it. And she's on Prevacox and a glucosamine supplement. So what do you recommend feeding older, older horses? Um, it'll depend on when you do your dental exam. Yeah. Because if she, is, if she does not have at least three teeth per side uh -huh. that actually can chew, then they have to have a modified diet, which is usually pellets. Oh, okay. Pellets or soaked cues. Okay. So, because then they don't have to chew the fibers yeah. off. Yeah. Um, so it'll depend on that. And if she is able, able still to eat hay, uh, she may just, maybe she's got something loose in there that's making her chew a little differently. Yeah. Then. So she, some horses will stay on hay her whole life. Yeah. Others oh, can't. She has been, she has been eating hay. Um, I've been keeping her kind of separated down again so I can watch that. So when I give her a Neutrina Senior. Does she make cuts? When she um, I'm, I have found a couple of um, balls of wet hay. Yep. But not, not like a lot of them. Um, she's free choice hay. I soaked alfalfa pellets and equine senior um, and then put her supplements in there. That's what she's been getting. I mean, those are all good choices. Now there's chopped hay too. Yeah, of course, that still have hay. It's expensive. Yeah, yeah. But it'll all depend on kind of what you find. Yeah. If there's a reason in the mouth. <laughs> if yes. there's a reason yes. in the mouth for the job yeah. or not. Yeah, I'm excited to see what's in there. Yeah. How she's doing. That. And it, when they're 26, it can change a lot in the view. Now, what about, um, so a choke. What are the, because I've never had, a, personally, I've not had, um, well, I had one other horse that would, that would choke, but she always resolved it on her own. So what is the, with that, with that case, that horse bolted grain. So some people say never feed pelleted feed that's not wet. Um, I've gotten a lot of, a lot of comments about that. They say you should never feed a pelleted feed unless it's wet because it expands in their throat. True, not true. Um, certainly horses do choke on pellets when it forms into like a gob. And then a lot of times, if they have to have a tube to get the choke resolved, you, you'll almost drill back this packed kind of damp feed. Okay. So that I think that's where that comes from. Um, that being said, a, a lot of horses eat pellet and yeah. feed just fine. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know that that's a for sure yeah. thing. I mean, people have a bias based on right. Right. what they've had. Certainly pellets, older horses that can't chew, can uh, have a complete 100% pellet diet and do great. Mm -hmm. And that is about what they have to have if yeah, they can't yeah, they get to that point. Right. What She's about beet pulp? Beet pulp, on beet pulp? Beet pulp is um, almost exactly the same as an oat when you compare it to nutritional value, okay. the same amount of carbs and okay. everything. Beet pulp was initially developed for racehorses because they couldn't eat enough forage. So the beet pulp has the same amount of carbs and calories as an oat, but it has more fiber. And so it was developed for racehorses who can't eat enough fiber, like a 100% hay diet. And so they would use that so that it was a concentrated source of energy that had the fiber. Okay. Mostly horses that are on grass or hay as their primary diet do not they need, don't need that. Okay. okay. It doesn't hurt them, but they do not need that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's it's, and, and it also acts as a prebiotic, I guess, and that okay. it's just because it provides those fibers that help the gut, um, yeah. bugs in the gut. Yeah, it's a long stem fiber I read about a long yes. time ago. I was researching on yep. that for some reason. With Poco, remember Poco when he was so sick and yep. all those things wrong with him? So it, it's not a bad feed yeah. by any means, but if, they, if the diet is almost all hay or almost all grass, almost all forage, is what I'm saying, they, they don't need it. Interesting. I have no idea. Yep. I stopped feeding beef pulp, beef pulp, and cocoa guy because he was really the only reason I was feeding it. So 
start of the paint because you have to soak. You get and so then the winter it has to be soaked inside, yeah. or it'll be horrible. Yeah. And then, you know, but they like it. Yeah. They usually yeah. like it. Yeah. He stopped eating it after. Well, he he would go in phases like you'd eat one thing and then he would decide that he didn't like it anymore. <laughs> that is typical of old horses. Yeah. And it doesn't usually mean you know people want to equate that with well they're not doing well or yeah something, but sometimes it's just a whim. Yeah. You know, and you have to look for what they will eat. Yeah. Well, like my grandpa, when he got old, like old meaning like over, uh, was he 93, I think? He, d he couldn't That's taste. Old. Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't <laughs> taste things anymore. And he never drank in his entire life. And suddenly he started drinking whiskey because it was the only thing he could taste. So the only thing he could taste. Yeah. So Miss Kitty, she's very expressive and I don't know exactly what point you were at, but she gave a little kick out with the hind leg. I'm working on her hyoid, yeah. um, looking for reasons for her to choke, so okay. I'm looking for tightness on one side or the other okay. in her throat. She, <laughs> she said she didn't like that. She kicked out. That's normal. She does that. Oh, so she does that. Shot. She does that sometimes when she's, um, like if you cinch her up too tight, she'll definitely do that. Um, when the flies are mad, she kicks straight out. It's, she's so expressive. She shows her. She shows you if she doesn't like something. Oh, working on her TFA yeah. just a little. She probably will not have sharpness, which is what you're typically looking for with a float. Okay. Because they don't, well, some some do, but that's not usually the thing. But get in there and look at how are they keep meeting or not keep meeting on each side. What's the angle look like? All those things. So we'll be good. That'll be assessed. Yeah. Outside or inside for your clinic? We rode inside. Really not a good so spot. Nervous. I know. It's really not a good spot to be outside here. And when they look at you like that, of course. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. That's pretty good. scary. I typically will ride just in a halter and I like, you know, the uh, Bozelle. I've got a couple horses that have graduated to riding in that, but I start everything in the snaffle and if they don't understand it, the snaffle, anything bitless will be really confusing because there's a lot of like blurry areas, I think. So if they understand it and they work really good off your leg, then it seems to go pretty well. Have you ridden in the back of the trailer and filmed that to show what it feels like to the horse? Not yet, and I want They used to. to do that at Pony Club. Um, yeah. With the kids, they'd drive yeah. around the yeah. um, I've done that in 4-H. Fairgrounds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a really... Yeah. Well, when I was a kid, I used to actually ride in the trailer with the horses all the way from the fairgrounds. 
So I mean, it's only, it's a couple miles, but still it was so cool because to watch the horses and how they break with their hind end and um, that kind of stuff is really interesting. But we took a couple horses to Illinois this summer and when we got there, it was a slant load trailer. They're, the two horses that were in the front, their right hind legs were stocked up pretty bad. And all I can think of is they're, they were stopping that whole trip, they were stopping with the right hind leg. So they were working that hind leg so much that there's some so number up. about like so many hours in the trail equals uh, in the trailer equals so many hours riding. Mm -hmm. and I, I, it's interesting. I'd be lying. So now explain the tail pull. So the older horses really like to have their tail pull because it's stretching out between the pelvis and the sacrum. And oftentimes the sacrum is off a little bit, and hers was, so you're just kind of fatiguing that area so that it'll maybe want to stay where you've adjusted it. Okay. Uh, the older horse is gentle. I think it's really gentle. Okay. Older horses usually like it because it's gentle. Yeah. Not all of them like to, you know, bring their back up. And but she's but reluctant. Tend. Yeah. She'll do it, but she's reluctant. Some really get into it, and she's going to go now. Manzer loves it. Yeah, tail pull. he loves butt tucks and he loves tail pulls. Well, because he has a young body, yeah. right? Yep. Everything feels good to him. Yeah. All right, she's all set. Awesome. So overall, your overall thought about her condition and how her body feels and that kind of stuff. Okay, so she, I don't find anything sore on okay, her, but she's not a sore horse. She had a couple areas that were um, out of adjustment and needed to be realigned. I think those are gonna feel good to her. Um, I think her condition is really typical for an older horse. They don't have quite as much muscling over the back, although this is pretty good. Yeah. And her weight, ideal. Um, problem with them at this age, they don't have to lose much and all of a sudden they look thin. Yeah, so to me, I feel like she's lost a little bit and because she's always been a little bit um, rounder. And in Michigan, we have severe winters and yeah. it makes everyone worry. And so she probably can go in, you know, have a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Cool. She's ideal condition score, but it just they shrink so fast, yep. especially when they're older. And yep. Like you say, when their muscle tone is not as great. And if she's just a, so she's just a little off in the hind end because of arthritis. Movement is good for her too. Movement, the um, steady movement is better than standing around. Okay, so like let's move it or lose it. Yeah, move it or lose it. Okay. Yep. okay, that would be a good rule for her. Okay, so I've been using her for, or I haven't been using her nearly as much as I. Did because I'm not doing as many private lessons and she's a great horse for private lessons. With the groups, there's a lot of um, cantering, lots of trotting. I was trying not to overdo it with her work-wise. So now I just need to make sure that she gets a little bit more exercise. Cool. And how, when, um, how long before her next adjustment do you think? The, uh, well, it kind of depends on what she does and what she's doing. Um, I think this horse is, uh, I would say, two, three months. If, okay. she, if she, three to four times a year, be great. Okay, good me. Yeah, ideal. Okay. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like, share it with your friends, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.